Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. The dates that we'll be looking at for this video will range from the 7th of August up until the 13th and as always we'll have a look first at some games that are already out and missed a previous video for whatever reason before delving into this week's games in particular. So what's on the horizon for this week? Well, let's find out. The first game then that's already out comes from the sponsor of today's video and this is Driving School Sim. This is a driving simulation game which features over 150 vehicles in categories ranging from sports cars, SUVs, sedans, supercars, hypercars and hatchbacks. You'll need to abide by the rules of the road as you drive around huge maps including those based on famous cities, mountain roads, desert landscapes and snowy streets with different exams taking place on each map and free licenses to go for car, bus and truck. There are more than 80 levels, a free ride mode, race mode and learn mode as well as online multiplayer modes. It promises the feel of real car handling, an improved damage system, next gen weather conditions, tilt steering buttons or touch steering wheel, online leaderboards and achievements, petrol or gas refilling and manual transmission with clutch. If this sounds like your sort of game then it's out now on the eShop and sells for £13.49 or your regional equivalent. Also out and I must have completely missed this one is Corpse Killer 25th Anniversary Edition. Now Corpse Killer was one of those FMV style games that came out way back in the day for the Sega CD or Mega CD depending on your region and is a game that I've always wanted to try. It's a horror themed on rail shooter, a guilty pleasure genre of mine for sure and this anniversary edition promises a higher video quality and some bonus content. It features the acting talents of Vincent Ciavelli, who I always remember as the organ grinder in Batman Returns, and he was the get off my train character in Ghost I seem to remember as well. It also has Bill Moseley who played Chop Top in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I think this got a physical release via limited run games, but this digital version goes for £11.19 or your regional equivalent. One that slipped through the net in its respective week's video was Banner of Ruin. This is a deck building game which many people have mentioned in the comment sections of various videos of ours and sees you fighting a series of turn based battles with your team of up to 6 members. You need to defeat each of the 6 elite opponents in your path and each character has a unique set of cards and abilities that can augment your deck in powerful ways according to the blurb. It sells for £15.49 although you can currently get 20% off of that price for about another 10 days give or take from the date of this video or you can even get it for half price if you own the publisher's other Switch game Legend of Keepers. Finally for the games that are already out we have Haven Park. This is a charming little adventure which is almost a mix of indie game A Short Hike and something like Animal Crossing to an extent. You take control of a small bird who must renovate a number of campsites taking on objectives from the campers too. We reviewed this game last week and really enjoyed it especially for the cheap price of just £6.99 and a link to that review will be in the top pinned comment if you want more information. The first of this week's games then is called Black Book which describes itself as a fusion of card based RPG and adventure game. Your character is searching for the titular Black Book to try and use it to revive her dead lover. You will be collecting cards and skills to assist you in unleashing spells, solve riddles and complete side quests. It says that you can send demons to do your bidding although it does say that idle demons will torture you which sounds like quite an interesting mechanic and the world that you are exploring is based on northern Slavic mythology. All sounds pretty good to be fair and it sells for £22.49 although there is 15% off of that price up until the 17th of August. Next is Tetragon which is a 2D puzzle game set in a square shaped world. It says here that the walls can suddenly change position rearranging the game's gravity force. You must move the ground and the towers in order to make your way through the levels. The blurb goes on to say that there are hundreds of puzzles, mazes and challenges and over 40 different levels set across three worlds. It uses quite a pleasant art style with what looks like hand drawn sprites and backgrounds with some pixel based foreground objects and may be worth a go for fans of logic puzzles. It sells for £13.49 and is another game with a discount, in this case 20% off until the 19th of August.
Releasing on the 12th is Foreclosed, which is a game that we will be covering next week. This is a narrative-driven action-adventure set in a cyberpunk world. You play as Evan Kapnos, who has recently had his identity foreclosed. He has been stripped of his job and his brain implants and must now escape before his identity and implants are auctioned off. Describing itself as an interactive graphic novel, it says that Foreclosed merges the playability of video games with the sleek visual aesthetic of comic books, and that art style most certainly does look appealing, judging by the trailer. You'll be unlocking new abilities with an RPG-like skill system and upgrading weapons with experimental augmentations. I do really like that game comic book style where the panels of the story play out on the screen, going all the way back to games like Comic Zone to more recent games like Liberated. It's going to sell for £14.99, but once again has a discount, 20% off until the 25th of August. On the 13th you have Fault Triumph, which is a turn-based tactics game which includes Permadeath. I'm guessing it's a bit like Fire Emblem in that respect. It says lead a band of heroes with different skill sets through a witty parody fantasy plot. You can utilise your surroundings using natural objects such as trees and boulders as weapons. You can choose between four different factions and four classes and must build a base, gather resources and learn new skills. It goes on to say that your heroes will grow, gaining new traits and cross-class skills and that the maps are procedurally generated with variable locations and events. All sounds pretty decent and it sells for £17.99. Then you have Cardaclysm Shards of the Four, which is the third card based battle game on this video so far I believe. This is a procedurally generated collectible card game which mixes in ARPG elements. You collect creature and spell cards throughout your journey and unleash their power on your foes. There are more than 200 cards and arenas located in different biomes. There are 5 factions, over 40 artifacts to equip to your hero and 5 mythic bosses to fight. You can trade cards in the interdimensional pub between quests and the worlds and biomes will change between turns due to the endless generation of each. It's going to sell for £11.99 or your regional equivalent and releases on the 13th. Then we have Shadowverse Champions Battle, which is only another bloody card battle game. Something tells me the publishers should have coordinated their release dates a bit better, or they could have battled it out with their own cards to see who got this week. Anyway, I digress. This particular series began life as a free-to-play game on iOS and Android back in 2016, and has since had its own anime show. I don't know if this is a souped up version of that free to play game or a new game entirely and the blurb doesn't really make it very clear to be perfectly honest, but at £44.99 I would hope it's more of the latter. It says the legendary card game for mobile devices is now available on Switch with the same basic rules and featuring battle animations unique to console, so make of that what you will. It features online and local play and does have a demo to be fair, which is probably the way to go at least initially for the price being asked. If you know more about this series, perhaps you can enlighten us in the comments section. And finally for the week then, we have Witch Spring Free Refine the Story of Erudy, which I believe is another game with mobile roots, and it says this is a standalone entry in the series. You play as Erudy the Witch, who after meeting a young man in the forest, finds herself going on an adventure which will ultimately lead to a choice between light and dark. It's a turn-based RPG with what it calls an evolving battle menu and a dull summoning battle system. Again, not a series I'm familiar with, so if you are, then please do feel free to share your knowledge with the rest of us in the comments section, and the game itself releases on the 13th and will sell for £34.99 or your regional equivalent. <laughs> So there you have it then, another week of Nintendo Switch releases. I mean, let's be honest, if you like card battling games, you're absolutely in your element this week. If you don't, well, it's always next week, I suppose. Please do let us know, though, if you are picking any of these games up or if any of them interest you. 
A big thank you to our sponsor of today's video. Don't forget their game Driving School Sim is available on the eShop to purchase now. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe and until next time, happy gaming.